Hi everyone, today I wanted to go over some basics of the ATCs and ATC is an acronym for Artist Trading Cards and I um, moderate a group on yourpaperpantry.ning.com which swaps out ATCs monthly in um, uh, typically in groups of around 10 participants and each month there's a theme for the month as well as a color challenge for example January which is currently swapping so you cannot sign up for it's too late to sign up for it but it is um, resolutions, new starts, um, traditions and the color challenge is using gray and pink and I've already started receiving completed cards in and they're just incredibly inspirational. Um, I love seeing what everyone creates. The theme is interpreted by each um, participant in such a unique way that it's wonderful when all the cards come in. So let me just tell you a little bit about the um, artist trading cards. Um, and I'll include a link to the Wikipedia information in the description below for those of you who want to check out for yourself. Um, basically, um, artist trading card is an eight, uh, three and a half by two and a half size, um, um, small enough um, to be able to collect. I think the intention was that it could fit in your pocket um, initially, and that's why it's the size that it is. It's the same size as the modern baseball cards. I'm sorry about the glare. It's the same size as the modern baseball cards. Um, it's the size of many standard uh, playing cards, so you could totally recycle, use playing cards, gesso them, paint them. Um, the pack that I'm showing you right here is a Strathmore assorted pack. Comes with two sheets of the vellum bristol, smooth bristol, canvas, textured, and watercolor, and one sheet of the illustration board and the acrylic. And I love the illustration board. It's a really nice, smooth, just thick enough, but not too thin and not too thick. Um, you don't even need to just sew the illustration board. It's wonderful. I really like it. Um, but if you have never um, participated in um, ATC swaps, I'd recommend for you to just stop by in your local scrapbooking store or in one of the big box stores and stop by and pick up um, this assortment pack from Strathmore. I think it's like $2 or 38 cents. It's not very expensive. Or it's around two something, between two and two fifty. And then you can play around with the different uh, types of papers that you could use. Um, I, I love this pack and um, the illustration board is also sold I believe in 20 by 30 sheets which you can cut yourself. So there are pre-cut ones available. You could recycle um, you know, uh, playing cards. You can cut your own. Um, a 12 by 12 sheet will yield you enough for a swap, you know, for, you know, a swap of 10. So that's what the ATCs are. It's tiny little works of art on a two and a half by three and a half inch or I think it's 63 millimeters by 89 millimeters for those of you who are in the metric system uh, part of the world um, and we trade them uh, over the course of a month they're sent in by the 25th this is on yourpaperpantry.ning.com um, the new swaps open up on the 25th and are open until the 5th of the following month to for signing up. Um, there's been typically about two groups of 10 each and um, what is created is just incredible and you get this tiny little work of art and I'm just showing my examples because I didn't want to I couldn't pick from all the gorgeous creations so I stuck to just showing my feeble attempts but anyway so let me show you um, kind of what is necessary to participate in the your Paper Pantry ATC Swap. To participate in the Your Paper Pantry uh, .ning .com ATC Swap, um, you need to have signed up um, by the 5th of the month. And you need to be an active swapper, so an active participant without, um, you know, that you've swapped in the... To participate in the Your Paper Pantry .ning Dot com ATC swap um, you need to um, sign up by the 5th of the month uh, sign ups typically open up the 25th of the previous month um, there's a 
theme and a challenge posted the theme um, for each month and there's a color challenge typically two sometimes three colors then you need to create um, there's usually around 10 in each group and we've had uh, two groups for the last uh, year or so so you need to create 10 ATCs or however many number of total number of participants in the group keep one send the rest in to me and I have my address my mailing address posted on the Ning site and then when they all arrive I swap them out and return them back to you so to send them in um, it's best to use one of these size envelopes and I think this one is nine by six and this one is ten and a half I think by seven and a half Yep. Uh, remember, the smaller the envelope, um, more snug the content, so it won't shift around. If you're using too large an envelope, they'll be shifting in processing and mailing, and it's li more likely to get damaged. So, try not to use too large an envelope, and obviously, don't try don't use a too small an envelope if you're stuffing things in. Um, it's it's too tight. So these two sizes are really ideal. Um, the second thing is if you would like for me to recycle the envelope that you ship in, just write somewhere on the envelope that you would like to have it recycled. You know, please use this envelope and then when you're sealing it, don't go overboard. You know, seal it so uh, things don't pop out or fall out in shipping, but don't seal it so much that I can't extract the content and, re and reuse the packaging. Um, so if we have multiple groups and the other thing that I ask for is if you just add a quick little message on, on the envelope saying if you're group one or two or three how many groups where you know we have so that's the shipping please make sure that you have ample postage um, if you are including a return envelope you can adhere the postage directly to that envelope and Put on as much postage as it costs you to send to me, because you'll be getting ten back, you know, the same number back as you've sent in, um, and maybe one or two extra stamps just on the off chance that um, someone created one out of gold. No, not likely, but <laughs> you understand what I mean. Um, a little extra just in case if they don't need to be used, they will be returned to you. Uh, for international swappers, um, right now. Uh, the Canadian uh, price or the, the price for shipping two ounces to and from Canada or to Canada from the states is about um, two eighty five to uh, three dollars uh, US. So that gives you an idea. And two ounces, two point two ounces, is about the average um, package size for the ATCs for ten ATCs. For international swappers, the last package that I sent internationally was to, uh, I believe, New Zealand, and it was only three dollars and I think fifty-four cents U.S. So that also gives you an idea. So it's r relatively affordable um, to participate even internationally because the shipping is not overwhelming. Um, so that's shipping. Just make sure you include enough. Um, for those who are internationally, can always PayPal me the shipping amounts if you are not comfortable. Um, providing obviously you won't be able you won't have access to US postage okay what types of things not to put on your ETCs it's probably best not to put anything especially if you're shipping internationally that could flag your package and some of the things that could flag is um, metal pieces anything that goes through a uh, detector it could be flagged for an unknown item in the package so you want to keep an eye out for that uh, there's plenty of materials to use that you don't really need to although I have to say this I was guilty of this is one of mine so I did have metal in the uh, clothespin I don't believe anyone had any issues with this and it, and th these did go internationally so just keep um, keep cognizant of the fact that the heavier you make it the more postage it will be for everyone. Uh, the bulkier you make it, um, the less likely this is to be stored um, in the way that a lot of people store their ATCs is in the uh, sport card sleeves. Um, so, you know, as long as... I know this one would never have fit either, so 
I was guilty of that as well. But, you, you know, you're only limited by your imagination. You can absolutely make whatever you would like. Um, you know, you put dimensional items on it. Um, I have some flowers in a vase in this one. You know, um, you are only limited by your imagination. And it's a wonderful little space to work in. Two and a half by three and a half inches. It's not intimidating. Um, it could be any types of media. Pencils, pens, markers, paint, watercolors, acrylics, whatever comes to mind. So um, we'd love to have you uh, stop in and participate with us. Join us on yourpaperpantry.ning.com. If you have any questions for me specifically regarding ATCs, uh, feel free to ask. If I don't know, I will look it up. Um, if I don't know, I will ask um, others. Um, if I do know, I will answer. So thank you so much for um, sticking through the whole video. Um, if you have any questions about ATCs or your paper pantry, um, or if you have any other questions for me, please leave me a comment. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I forgot to mention, I pack my ATCs individually in these Doris, um toolbox self-sealing bags. And they're 3 and 8 by 4 and 8 and they come to 80, 82 a pack, which would give you quite a few months worth of um, um, uh, sleeves to put your ATCs in. Um, these are available at joanne.com. I don't believe they're available at the store. You could certainly um, Google it and see if Doris is avail this particular Doris package of self-sealing bags is available somewhere locally for you. There you go. Sorry about that.